Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. There's some things that God gives you and you just really don't know how to put it out there. But uh, are you going to believe with me for utterance today? Are you? Okay, because here's the thing. Um, man, I've got a million thoughts where I'm trying to categorize them here right, real quick. <laughs> it's probably a wrong time to do that, isn't it, Spencer? Better beforehand, but you know... When God brings it to you, you know, you don't get to, you don't get to pick and choose the timing sometimes. But um, with, and I've said this a lot here lately, but, you know, social media, internet, all this stuff, it's just a lot of voice. This is what's kept going over in my mind all week. It's a lot of voices all at one time. Yeah. And I don't think that's by accident from and I'm not saying if you're on social media, it's evil, but you know, there's sometimes there's a lot of things on there that's just people making noise, people being loud, people making commotion, and, and it's all at one time. And it seems like that's what the enemy likes to do is, is to put a lot of voices out there at one time because it brings confusion. And I really think that's... I can't say the number one thing. I mean, who? I don't have any statistics on that, but um, <laughs> just make up some. I remember my dad, pre he's here today. It's his birthday, and he was preaching one time, and he said, if you don't believe that, he said, if I'm wrong, I'll fry my sock and eat it. <laughs> of course, I was just a little kid. I said, man, I hope he's wrong. <laughs> I wanted to see that. But anyways, I think, I think the enemy likes to use confusion. Yeah. And I, I think that's, uh, that's one, one of the um, directions I feel like God's wanting me to go today is dealing with that. But not just talking about the confusion. On the flip side of confusion is, you know, there's two sides to every coin. And on the flip side of confusion is peace and calm. And as I've been praying this weekend, spending time with God this weekend, um, obviously through the week or all the time, but you know, as, as we come into the service, it seems like God begins to dial in the closer we get. And that's one thing that uh, God really burnt in my spirit early this morning was that he is trying to bring a peace and a calm to our lives and not in creating it for you, but you stepping into what already exists. God doesn't have to get out and create things for you because through Jesus Christ, everything that you need's already been provided for you. That's why Paul wrote that, that we've been saved by grace through faith. Grace has already provided what you need. Your faith reaches out and takes hold of that. Amen. We all know that, so, but uh, I really feel like that is the point to today's word today is to bring a peace and a calm to our life in a world that's really loud and in a world, and I, I preached on this here a while back about um, demanding an answer almost. Spencer, when you get online, it's like, what do you think? <laughs> you ever notice that in your social media page when you first open that up? What's on your mind? Well, there's just sometimes you need to keep what's on your mind to yourself. Is that straight enough? Yeah. All right. So, and we're, you know, one thing, I got this wrote down in my, uh, on my little binder here, is that we would speak the word with clarity and boldness, but with grace. You can be straightforward and still be graceful. Do you know that? We're all living in the same world. Let's turn to the book of James chapter 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, as I, I woke up this morning early, as usual, extra early today, my wife was up and getting stuff around because we, we got a birthday party today for O'Ron. 
over there. And uh, I appreciate my dad. But, um, man, God just started dealing with me on wisdom immediately out of a dead sleep. I mean, I'm like, James, you know, James 1 was going over in my mind. Immediately, I'm talking now. I, I even got the, the slobber off the side of my face, Rusty, and I've got <laughs> James 1. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, so let's just read, um, let's read verses 4 through 8. Thank you, Lord. It says, but let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that kind of went along with the confusion that God kept burning into my spirit this week about a spirit of confusion. Um, you know, when we ask, uh, and I'm going to tell you what brought this on was when we first started coming here, it was on a Wednesday night. I'd been asking God for peace in my life. And uh, at the end of the service, um, I'd been praying all that day for peace. And Miss Bonnie stood up and she said, I've got a word for, from the Lord. And uh, she said, there's somebody in here that's been asking God for peace. But she said, what you need to be asking for is wisdom. Because with wisdom comes peace. Every, matter of fact, everything good comes with wisdom because of wisdom. And so this really started at whatever time this morning, this all, all the wheels started turning. And, and this all came began to come clear to me. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 13, starting in verse 13. And you're saying how we, well, we're talking about peace, but I believe that peace comes through wisdom according to Scripture here. We're going to read this. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, let's listen to these words, okay? For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Amen. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not compared unto her. Pleasantness, yeah, pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and, hath, and ha happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, they, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. So let's look here at this. He said, when we talk about wisdom, when you ask, James said, when you ask, he said, don't ask doubting. Because he said, if you, if you ask and you begin to doubt, what did he say? You're like, a, you're like a wave of the sea, tossed around. You believe this way one minute, another minute you believe this way. That's why when we hold this Bible up, and you know, they used to say, was it John Osteen? This is my Bible. You know, I don't know, I don't, I don't have it all memorized, but uh, you know, I can, I can say what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. All that stuff would go down the line. You want to know why? Because at, at, the, at the base of your life and the foundation of your life needs to be founded and built on what this word says and not to veer off of it at all, period. Because here's the thing. Every belief, every doctrine, every secular view can all be proved or argued, correct? 
to be truth and compelling. But there ha there's one thing that we have to understand that in this life that we have to know is that there's only one thing that we can hang on to and that is our faith. That we build this on because there's a lot of people can take this same Bible and can say it contradicts itself and prove that God's not real or certain doctrines that we believe are not real. But there's one thing that I've determined to do is to believe. I'm just saying that you, it takes faith to, to just say, I believe in the word of God. And what I mean by that is this, I'm going to believe in this word and I'm going to build my life on it and I'm not going to be listening to what everybody else is saying because I have chosen to believe what this word has to say. That's why it's written that it, without faith, it's what? It's impossible to please God. So if I don't have faith, there, I, I've done lock myself into an impossibility of pleasing God. So I have to determine I'm going to build, and I'm going to get to this here in a minute. The reason I'm going to build this, my life, on this word is because the results. There has to be, I believe, signs following I believe that. So we're, and I'm gonna, we can prove that, and, and the, not by words, not by just what we know traditionally, but what we've experienced. There's one thing that I have, the reason people say, how do you know God's real? I've experienced him, Bo. I felt him. And you know what? People, other people don't have to believe that. They can choose not to believe that. But I'm not going to deny what I've experienced. I'm going to build my life. I'm going to begin to build my life on that. Anyways, uh, moving on here. There are, when we start talking about wisdom, there are two types of wisdom. Let's look in the uh, book of 1 uh, Corinthians. Y'all give me a second here. We'll, we'll get rolling in just a minute here. There's two types of wisdom. There's, there's the world's wisdom, and then there's the heaven's wisdom. And I'm just going to read a few scriptures here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 4. It says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let me say that again. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yeah. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. So we know that the world definitely has a view of what they feel like wisdom is, right? Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world into our glory, get this, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I mean, if they would have had the wisdom from, that was from above, they never would have crucified Jesus. He, it, it wouldn't, he wouldn't have uh, had to die, or he wouldn't have died on the cross. But we also, so we see here a, a world's view of wisdom. Let's turn to James chapter 3. I think I've actually got this printed out here. Yeah, James chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 13. It said, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with the meekness of wisdom. But if you, and you know what? We've been talking about forgiveness, and I think this all ties in. This is all going to tie in together at the end of this thing. It says, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it is earthly, it's sensual, and it's devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits with partiality and without hypocrisy. 
and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So we see here that when there is envy and strife and when there is wisdom that is world's wisdom, the number one thing you're going to find is confusion. So to attain true wisdom, this is really what I wanted to title this message today. Whose voice should I be listening to? In a world that is super busy, in a world that is super loud, of all their views and all the things that are going on, whose voice should I be listening to? God's. We should be listening. We all, the reason I'm asking that is because we all know that, right? Subconsciously, we know that. But there's, there's a lot of what we see sometimes is feeling like we need to get in the fight. Yep. We need to get in there and let our voice be heard. Yeah. Like God don't know how to take care of himself. You know, like we're going to, I'm going to help him out here, you know. Um, so I've got, um, let's, let's turn to John chapter 10 real quick. And I know y'all are looking at me like he didn't study, but I did. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I feel like the Apostle Paul, whenever I think it was Agrippa looked at him and he said, much learning has made you mad. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Jesus said. You know, when the world's being loud and the world's being gruff, um, I'd like to go back and, and hear what Jesus says. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth, entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. Whose voice are you listening for? That's really the question we've got to ask ourselves. Whose voice are we listening for? And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Did you, know, you notice there that him, he's talking about being the good shepherd? He leads people. You see, God is the good shepherd. He's not the, he's not the good cowboy. Cowboys push. When they're on their horse and they're pushing the cattle, they're pushing those cattle. They're pushing them. They're driving them. Jesus is leading And when he putteth, verse 4, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, and he, and, sorry, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. I'm going to have to go up to the 1.5s instead of the 1.25s. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and when he putteth, <laughs> you know, they, they always tell me that I'm not here for comedy relief. But I have to tell this story. Uh, somebody called uh, the radio station the other day and nobody was in there. So I, uh, I answered the phone like I was going to really be able to help them, you know, with the radio station stuff. And it was a lady, and she was just as serious as she could be. Never, there was nobody else here, so that's why I answered the phone. And uh, she said, can you play me a song? And I said, well, I really don't know anybody by heart, any by heart but <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> There was a dead silence on the other end of the line. I don't think she found that near as funny as I did. <laughs> but anyways, that's probably why I don't answer the phone a lot. <laughs> but anyways, okay, let's get back to the word. All right, because I, I could tell right then we need some calming relief because y'all's looking at me like, I don't know, like I've lost my mind. Let's go to verse 5. It says, in a stranger, is, well, in verse 4 it says, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. That means run. When I'm hearing voices that's not God's voice, I'm running. I don't want to hear what they got to say. I don't want to hear their views. I don't have to know. A lot of people think they got to know all about the sin to stay away from the sin. I don't have to know anything about it. I know there's LGBTQ... Where are they to now? I don't know. I don't have to know. And I'm not making fun. I'm not making fun. I realize that some of those, here's the thing. 
There are some of those people that are, they're this, they are confused. That's exactly what the enemy wants. They want them to be confused. And I want to tell you, this is just off the cuff. All this stuff really boils down to is this right here. The devil is doing everything he can to rob man of his creative power. Now they're creating robots for you to be with. And I'm like, we've been able to create people from the beginning of time. And now we're, we're so smart that we're going to create something. We, you can get together and make people. You, I'm not trying to be perverted. I'm just saying, you know, at the end of the day, you know, one plus one can equal two. But see, the devil's got people so confused that they don't even know what they are biologically. And, this is, and he's over here, this is, and he, I can guarantee you in his mind, he's going, this is perfect. This is great. I've got them right where I want them. They are so confused. They're like a termite and a yo-yo. They don't know which end is up or which way's down. And he's loving life. And we're over here going, I don't know if I'm a man or a woman. I don't know which bathroom to go to. I don't know. And he's over here. And I know that all sounds funny, but this is exactly where the enemy wants us as a society today. And he wants you to feel, and, and here's the thing, as, as a born-again believer, we want to get on our soapbox, and we want to get up and voice our opinion and what is right. But you know what Jesus probably wants you to do is stick your head back down in his pasture and start eating grass. I have, and and as I, I'm sure I can, I can speak for Pastor Susan and for Dylan. I have... I'm going to get up here and preach the Word of God. I'm going to get up here and preach truth. But I have no desire to go home and govern what you do behind closed doors. That's not what God's called me to do. Anyways, here we go. You got your preaching pants on? Because we're about to, I feel like we're about to get rolling here. But I got a video I'm going to show you here in just a second. I ain't forgot, Debbie. So he said that he would run, he would flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And that word door there actually means the access. He said, I am the access to the, of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We're gonna, we'll have to go to Psalms 20. What, in Psalms 23, what did he say? The, the, he, didn't have, he didn't have David write Psalms, so it would be something good to go on the back of the funeral flyers. It, it was, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or I will not lack. He leadeth me into green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. What is that? He's leading me into the ways of peace and calm and not into frustration and not into confusion and not into those things. But he's bringing you into a place to where, you know what? That may be here. And we're going to get to this here in just a minute. And I can't wait. It's going to be great. But he is the good shepherd and he is leading us in the ways of peace. Because... Has anybody ever read John 10 and 10? Well, he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal. I read this today in some notes that I took. I, I, it may have been the last time Pastor Tom spoke up here. I, got to, I know I only got to hear him one time. But he, talked about, he was talking about peace. And he said, You know we are in faith when you're in peace. And he said, but this is what he wrote by under, underneath that. He said, the devil is coming after your peace. He wants to take your peace. He wants to take your joy. He wants to take the calm in your life. He wants you to be upset. He wants you to lay awake at night. He wants you to be confused. But Jesus said this, I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So I've got, I found this video. I didn't find it. My wife, my wife, she's a great woman. 
but she instructed me today. She said, when you show the video, make sure you give credit to who you got it from. <laughs> Everybody needs a good wife Amen. or husband. <laughs> hey, that's where we're living at. Um, I went, I really felt the Lord compared, compelled me. Uh, anybody, everybody familiar with Keith Moore? Uh, does the week of increase in, the, in October. I really felt like God told, not audibly, but spoke something into my spirit about going to the Monday night meeting and not to tell anyone. I don't know what the not telling anyone had to do with anything. But anyways, you know, when the Lord, you feel like the Lord tells you something, you just do it. Um, so I didn't tell anybody else here. I left here at four o'clock. I do. If I left here at four, they started service at 630 and I, I felt like I could be there on time. I drove, I mean, like a maniac to get up there on time, but I was the whole time going, God, this just does, I can watch this online. That's the way a lot of people think. I can watch it online. But there's an anointing in the room. That's why, you know, that's why it's good to be. It's an anointing in the room. That's why you need to be here if you can. But anyways, I got up there and he showed this video. And I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of a prelude to what's going on here. You've got a shepherd or a pasture of sheep. And you've got two people that are going to be, that are not the trill shep, not the real shepherd, true shepherd, that are given, in, given the cadences that the true shepherd gives to these sheep so they know that it's him. But then he's going to step on at the end, and it's, it's a really neat thing to get to see. So Debbie, if you'll go ahead and play that, and uh, we'll uh, just let you watch that. One more time. Did you notice those sheep were not moving, not even looking at the two that weren't the real shepherd? They weren't even paying attention. They were, had their face in the grass eating of what their shepherd had already provided for them. But whenever the real shepherd, you, you saw when he began to talk, what they do? They looked up. They began to perk up. And they began to look. And as he began to call, what did they do? They came to him. And I thought, I, whenever I saw that up there, I wept because it was so powerful to me. Because in, in, in what God was showing me all the way home was in this loud, obnoxious world that I shouldn't have to even raise my head up and even look at what's going on. And I'm not, I'm not dodging the subjects. I'm not... I'm not afraid to get into the argument. It's not, that has nothing to do with it. I just understand that God has already provided peace for me. Amen. And the greatest thing, it goes back to this. When we were talking about forgiveness, the greatest thing about forgiveness is this. It's letting Christ manifest. And when our lives are peace and calm, and we're only listening to what the master or the good shepherd is saying to us and people see that calm in our life, you know what it's going to begin to do? It's going to begin to show a witness. Amen. We can't forget there's got to be a witness. There's got to be a witness. So we need to understand that the good shepherd, all we have to do is respond because I wrote this down. This is what I wrote down when I left. This is what I felt like the Holy Spirit gave to me. 
was the design of the sh- the design of the sheep is not to gain knowledge so at some point I don't need the shepherd the knowledge that I need is simple to know his voice his tone his sound and once I know that language tone and sound I simply just do what he says that's the peace I don't have to get involved with the world and what they're doing. I don't have to get in, involved in the arguments. I don't have to get in any of that. All I have to do is know the voice of the shepherd. I'm not saying there won't be times to talk. I'm not saying there won't be times to defend. I'm not saying all that at all. But you know what? Unless I hear the master telling me that, and we're going to get to that, you, people say, well, how do I know? I'm, gonna sh- I'm about to show you how you're going to know here in just a little bit. But anyways, we see there, I thought it was such a powerful video. I showed it to everybody that would stop and watch it. And uh, I wanted to share that with you because it was a great visual to me of the, the other two shepherds that weren't the real shepherd that were calling. I just love the way the sheep never, I noticed there was like one that kind of looked up for a second. <laughs> but it, it, it's like there was one sheep beside him said, bitch, head down. Yeah. Put your head back down. Don't let, it's not... <laughs> And that's really what we need as, as people that we're discipling. That's really what we need to tell people that are new to Christ. Hey, get your head back down in the book. Get yourself back down in prayer. Get yourself in church. Get, get yourself surrounded with the teaching and the word of God. And forget about all that other stuff. It's not an amount to a hill of beans. I've never seen, I've never ever, especially on Facebook, because I'm, you know, my late 40s and Facebook is the hub I don't know what they got now, but I've never seen anyone change anybody by arguing about it. And it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to pull my phone out. I'm going to state my opinion. That ought to fix it. Send. (laughs) And don't. You're just stirring up the hornet's nest, adding fuel to the fire, uh, adding a fence, when we need to be the light and the salt of this, of this earth, to this earth. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're still doing all right on time. But you know, are you in a hurry? Okay. If you learned something today, would it be worth your time? If something ministered to your heart today, would it be worth your time? All right, you said it would, so we'll do that. Let's start in verse 9 of chapter 4 there. It says, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? When it comes to love, he's saying, You don't need me to write nothing to you. He said that here, it says, For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, you do it toward all the brethren which are, uh, are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Get this in verse 11. And that you study to be quiet. And to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. Who is that without? That's the non-believers that are looking at our life. And Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, when you're telling people not to lie and you're lying or you're telling people not to do this and you're doing it, he said the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. There's got to be a witness. There's got to be a witness. Do you understand what I'm saying that when I say there's got to be a witness? There's got to be something manifesting in us because you know what? There's a lot of people that's looking at, at some church people that's acting the same as people out in the world and they're saying, you know what? If you're saved, I've always been saved. But he said, study to be quiet. You don't want to know what that word quiet means? It means to hold your peace. It means to rest. And man, here's a tough one, not to meddle. And if you want to know what meddling is, I think we all kind of know what meddling is. You all feel like that's what preachers do a lot, is meddle. But it means this in the Webster's Dictionary, interest oneself in what is not one's concern. Is there peace meddling in other people's affairs? There's not. There's no peace there. There's just more confusion. There's just more reason to be upset. 
there's just more reason to gossip. Man, it's quiet. There's more room for all kinds of stuff that doesn't need to be there. Let's look at 1 Corinthians, well, and you don't have to turn there, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Paul wrote this, he said that God is not the author of confusion. Well, here's the thing, if God's not, who is? It's the, it's the devil. He's the author of confusion. And the word confusion um, in the Greek, A-K-A-T-A-S-T-A-S-I-A. If y'all want to try uh, to pronounce that, you can. I'm not going to. But it actually means disorder, and it means commotion. God is not the author of disorder. God is not the author of commotion. But one of the other things that just men confuse. And so I looked in Webster's, and this, is, this was really impactful for me. The word confuse there means to, to bring to ruin. Confusion, at the, when you boil it down, brings us into a state of ruin. And that's where people are today. They're confused. They're confused about their gender. They're confused about all kinds of things. And I know that's a hot... But for me, it's just... It, it, the reason that impacts me so much is because it goes against everything that God designed. And people, you know, you can dig... And I'm not trying to steal anyone's thunder here... I can't remember who even said it, but you can dig somebody, a, a woman up from 100 years ago. You don't know what she believed in. You don't know what she thought. But if you dissect her bones, you're going to know she was a woman. And it's confusion. I'm not saying this to make fun of people. That's not why I'm here, is to make fun of people. Or to, you know, I, and hey, I'm a heterosexual man. Don't get me wrong. I'm... All the way, but you know, the thing is, I don't like to make fun of people that genuinely might be confused. Right. That's not what I'm called to do. Right. I'm, help, I'm here to help them to see that, hey, the confusion in your life is not from above, it's from the earth. It's sensual, it's devilish, and it's robbing you of your procreative power. And that's exactly where the enemy wants you to be at. Yeah. Right. He wants to bring you to, ru he wants to ruin you. A society that can't even create is going to come to a ruin. Satan is the opposite of everything that God is. And he's not blatant about it. Uh, I think Pastor Susan talked about that some in uh, Bible study Wednesday night. Um, you know, he's not, he's, he don't have a, he might, but I mean, um, a pitchfork and a pointy tail and horns. And the Bible says he disguises himself as an angel of light. You can see in, in Genesis chapter 3 that in verse 1 it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And, a, and that really defined in a bad sense cunning and crafty. And he began to mix truth and lie together. What does that do? That it confuses people. He, was con he, he, he knew he wasn't going to say, Eve, eat this fruit. I know God told you not to, but it is so good. It is so, but he said, you're not going to sure, surely die. And that word surely means suddenly. He said, you're not going to suddenly die. And Eve started listening to an added voice. The voice that she only knew before was God's voice. Mm -hmm. That's the only voice she knew. But then she started just listening mm -hmm. yep. to an added voice. Just a conversation. And it brought confusion and ultimately took her out of peace. Let's even look, let's look at verse 7. Well, let's, let's go back up to verse 6. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now, I'm going to... I'm not putting all the blame on Eve here because if, if I'm just thinking in my own mind, if I'm Adam, I'm like, this doesn't look like the normal fruit. Where'd you get this from? Or something, you know, so Adam's not out of, he's not uh, totally innocent here. He could have said something, but he didn't. Verse seven, 
It says, and the eyes of them both were opened. And I don't know why this stuck out to me when I read that. I thought, well, they've not been spending all this time walking around with their eyes closed or no sight. But at that time, they were so engulfed in the, in the spiritual realm that the Bible, if you look here, the very first thing they did is realize they were naked. And I don't know about you, but I've never been so spiritual that I forgot to put clothes on when I left the house. But it was the first sign that they, they looked, the first thing they noticed was that. So their, their mind and their eyesight went from a spiritual realm all the way into a natural realm. And when we get other voices speak into our life, and we get those added voices in our life, then our minds and our sight and our energy is going to go from being where God wants us to be and listening to his voice to now we're totally confused and now we've got ourselves meddling in the in world's wisdom or what the world would call wisdom. Is that good? Their eyes were opened. And I'm not saying that we can't be mindful of what we're doing. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I want to be like Enoch and I want to walk with God. I want to walk with him. I don't want to be meddling just in uh, the world's affairs. I want to have my mind uh, in tune and listening to the voice of the shepherd, right? I'm listening to his voice. And uh, I don't know about you with it raining yesterday. I did something I haven't done in a long time. I took me a good nap. <laughs> and um, right when I woke up, this is, I'm telling you, God blindsided me with this thought. You only need one voice. And I'm not talking about just one person, okay? I'm talking about people that have the Spirit of God on the inside of them because multiple multiple voices will always equal confusion and I'm this is the second thing that he hit me with was I want to pick the voice that gets results do y'all remember brother Tim Brooks teaching about that who who told you y'all remember that and about his professor that was tell, trying to question the existence of God and he said, I looked out the window, and this guy's driving some old beat-up nothing with a baling wire holding the rearview mirror on, smoking 40 packs of cigarettes a week, 11 marriages. You know, why am I listening to this guy? I want to listen to the people that get the results. That's why the people with God's Spirit, that's why when it comes to finances, I'm going to plug into Mark Evans. He's, get the, he's a spiritual man that gets the results. Well, listen to him, when it comes to family, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug into what Wes Boster's got to say. Uh, when it comes to, you know, I'm, I want to plug into a voice that I know is that's full of God's spirit, not just any old thing. Because here's the thing, God's spirit inside of you is what gets results. Has God produced results in your life? He has in mind. You know, uh, I believe it's Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 that says, If I seek him first in the kingdom, that everything that I need would be added unto me. Well, you know what? I've got clothes. I've got food. I drove down here in a vehicle that had air conditioning or heat, whichever one I needed. I had shelter over my head last night. I slept in a bed last night. I've got my family. I've got friends. I've got my health. That's the results of the Word of God inside of my life. So don't think that you don't have anything to govern that off of. Look around and look at your own life and you will see the blessings of God. He's been real to you. There's results there. The point to this whole message is a calm and a peace and a joy. In John chapter 14, and I'm going to try to close here. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus said this, Peace I leave with you. I want you to get this. He said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here's the thing. Your heart might try to be troubled and afraid. He's telling you, don't let it. 
Don't let it happen. But he just didn't say, I'm going to leave you with peace. He said, I'm rusty. He said, I'm going to give you my peace. That's a different kind of peace. Not just regular old peace. Jesus said, let me give you mine. You know, that's, that's pretty powerful. It'd be like, who's a world champion bass, boat, bass fisherman, Rusty? Anybody? Who? Clun? Walks up and says, here, let me give you my bass boat, Rusty. That's different than just getting a bass boat. I'm going to give you mine. Why? He's getting the results, right? He's getting the results. So when Jesus, which is the man getting the results, <laughs> walks up and says, let me give you my peace. That's different. I want his peace. Not just peace. I want his peace. John 15 and 11. I want, I want you to see he's, he, he's, he's, about, he's trying to prove something here, I believe. Verse 11, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Here's the deal. He, said, he didn't say that joy would remain in you. He said, my joy. That's different than just any old joy. Because what the world calls joy might be a new wife. But God's kind of joy would say, why don't you stay and work out with the one you got right now? Because in six months down the road, you're going to be dealing with the same thing you're dealing with right now. And the very well problem may not be them. It might be you. As our, my former pastor, he had a friend that had been married five times, and he, at, after the fifth divorce, he walked up to him and he said, you know what? What if I'm the problem? <laughs> he said, well, after five times, you know, it might, you, you know, it's good to look in the mirror and say, hey, let's at least take an observation here. But what, I believe what Jesus is saying here is I want to give you my joy. That sounds good to me. It's not just any old joy, not any old peace, but I want to give you mine is what he's saying to us today. And I love, in closing, I love what Jesus, David wrote in the book of Psalms. He wrote this. He said, we are the sheep of his pasture. I love that. I love that I'm just not a sheep of any old pasture. I'm a sheep of his. So I can have his peace. I can have his joy. And I can eat his grass. <laughs> And I can listen to his voice. And I can have all the good things that he's providing for me. And I don't have to listen to anybody else. And I can walk in peace. And I can walk with the calm in my life. Are y'all excited about that? Because I want to go home. And my wife said, you can fall asleep faster than anybody I know. And I said, you want to know why? I said, because I don't have anything on my mind. Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying at all that I don't have, uh, <laughs> maybe a few things. But <laughs> we studied on home last week. <laughs> but I'm talking about struggles. And I'm not saying that every, everything's not perfect, but I understand, I understand the word. And I'm not, it doesn't mean everything is just absolutely perfect. But I do know this, that I know, I like what Paul said, I know who I believed in. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep me. Uh, you know, and I know that we just need to get that deep down on the inside of us. To have his joy and his peace. And just to lay down at night and just say, Father, it's all yours. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I don't have to, you know. Sometimes you may have to work at that a little bit. You know, you may have to just, there's some things you've got to step out by faith um, and just say, you know, God, I may, it may be three in the morning, but you might have to just know that your, your rest is, is sweet. And you might have to just say it, even if it ain't happening. But you can rest, that's why it goes back to this, is I'm going to build my life on this word. This is what I want to be the foundation when, in a loud world. And, and, and a lot of voices and a lot of things being said and a lot of views and a lot of opinions, a lot of stuff going on. I just want to shave all that off and say, man, God, what does your word say? And I, I don't know, I wrote this, I saw this, I'm trying to close. Um, he said, you don't need a report if you already got one. <laughs> you don't need a report if you already got one. 
His report says I'm healed. I'm filled. His report says I'm free. His report says what? Victory. Yeah. All right, y'all stand up. Y'all are tired. <laughs> this has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.